Hey church, good to see you today. It's Tuesday uh, the 12th, and I'm uh, glad that you're taking a moment to listen to this little video blog that we're doing each week as we catch you up on the events of, of the week and the things that are coming up. Uh, just a, a brief reminder that uh, uh, we have this one more Sunday coming up, the 17th. We'll continue live services and the live stream at the Magnolia campus at 9 a.m. We do have a few people that are coming in for these services, and you're more than welcome to if you feel like you know, you're in good health and everything. You can come in and scatter around the auditorium. But it's the 24th. It's our official reopening and re-entry into our gatherings, into our fellowship. And I can't tell you how excited I am that we're getting back together. Uh, we've taken all the safety measures possible. We have the safe distancing with our aisles and seating from spreading out certain aisles and seats to reserved areas. So um, as you come into the service, you'll, you'll get more information about that as well and the seating and, and what's going on, entries and accesses. So in fact, uh, Tim, Pastor Tim, Pastor Gary, and I, maybe Pastor Matt will join us next week in, in this place, this Tuesday thing. Uh, we'll have a, a video from all of us explaining that re-entry and how that's going to work and what that's going to look like for you as you come to church on the 24th. But uh, Sunday, live streaming. And by the way, some of us, we're going to do live streaming after. Listen, we've been doing live streaming for a couple of years now. We're going to continue live streaming. There are those who probably shouldn't be in the service, obviously, on the 24th who are sick or you know, uh, uh, with fevers or maybe they have a compromised immune system. But whatever those are, you know, understand that we, we, we are cautious, we are conscious of the fact that you may not need to be there, but still be home for a few more weeks of live services, but we'll be presenting those. And we'll talk more about that next week. Uh, just praise the Lord that you continue to be so faithful with your tithes and your offerings, and you are continuing to be really faithful in, in your online attendance. So let's keep that up. 17th, let's make it high attendance Sunday, online high attendance Sunday. So everybody that gets online, be sure and make a comment. Tell us, you know, you're watching or just say amen or just praise the Lord and then maybe a like and a share uh, as well. Obviously share. We want you to, as soon as you go online, uh, to share that with other people that the service is going on. Uh, I know that some of you are, are facing some situations of that you're dealing with issues with maybe your job or some fears or some doubts and maybe even some, some depression. I'm just going to play like a three-minute clip. I'm going to add it on to here in one minute. Three minutes about uh, from a message that I preached uh, not so many weeks ago before the COVID crisis began about faith and how to really trust God. And it's a little three minute clip on the importance of really trusting, holding on and believing God in the midst of everything, no matter what you're going through. Some of you are facing some real doubts and maybe for your job, you're in the oil industry or whatever it might be. There's things that you're on your horizon that you're looking at that don't look real good. So I wanted to just play this to be a reminder of the faithfulness of God to you and, uh, and how God is going to meet your needs. And no matter what happens, if you belong to him, he's got you covered. So you can trust him and you can believe him. So let me play that clip for you. And God bless you. And I'll see you online Sunday. Amen. Well, it's important we don't leave the place of faith. We don't leave that space called belief and hope in Christ. That we hold on to what God sent. Some of you are facing some difficult situations, all right? Some of it I know just because you shared it with me. But even those that I don't know about, you're facing perhaps some situations. You need God. You need God to show himself. You need God to be strong right now in your heart and your life. This way you can't, you can't run to the place of despair. You've got to run and keep running to Christ and to his word and confessing and believing and holding on to the promise of God and just humble yourself before the Lord and say, my dependency, Lord, is not upon the situation. It's not upon me. It's not even upon my strength. My, my dependence is totally upon you today, Lord. I will depend upon you. I'll depend upon you for what I need because you are faithful in God. And listen, there's a million promises in the Word of God that support that promise right there. That God is faithful. That all things, God, God makes, God causes things to happen. What kind of thing? God causes all things, no matter how difficult they might be enough, to bring glory to Him. And therefore, you're good. Now, that's a, an incredible promise of God. That one promise of God in Romans chapter 8 should be enough to keep me from wringing my hands in fear and doubt in any situation. But I'm going to have to come to Him and trust and hold on to that and believe Him and be willing to submit to Him in whatever things may be coming next. Number four, and this is where the battle comes into our life. We just need to be single-minded. What's James say when he's talking about faith and trust the Lord? He says, listen, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally. He'll give you what you need to know about the situation. 
you ask wisdom. He said, but when you ask, you need to ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the sea, the, the, the waves of the sea that are tossed to and fro. He said, he that wavers is like a troubled water. In other words, we're not going to stagger. We're not going to waver, you know, at, at what God is saying. The, the Bible tells us in Romans 4.20, it was talking about Abraham's faith. It says, Abraham staggered not. In other words, he, he didn't kind of hesitate and back off and go, well, man, maybe not. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe, I, no, maybe I can't. But what about, well, God said, yeah, I don't, but, uh, what, you know. <laughs> It's back and forth. This is this, this, this mindset. What did James say in chapter 4, chapter 1? He says, he that wavers is like the waves of the sea. And he says, you ask believing. And he actually put this in, don't be double-minded. The double-minded man is like that wavering person. What does it mean to be double-minded? Well, we should know thoroughly and clearly because we wrestle with that often. There's the mind of the flesh and there's the mind of the spirit. There's the way of man, and there's the way of God. And we struggle going back and forth all too often. Well, this is what, you know, because we have that thought in our mind that comes up, because Satan knows how to hinder us. He knows how to lie to us. The Bible says he's a liar from the beginning. And then you add to that our own personal experience of time where we haven't trusted the Lord, all right? You know, and we know our own frailties, or we own, know our own weaknesses, and our, we know our own inabilities. He says, you know, if you're double-minded, if you're back and forth concerning what God's called you to, or what God wants you to do, what God's, what you're expecting God from God. You know, don't let that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord.